Nope. So last day, the last thing we looked at, well, we made loudspeakers, really cool, nerdly cool. But before that, we looked at the electric motor, and we said this, Amrit, if you send a current through, we called it the armature, it was a loop of wire in the magnetic field, then you could actually get the loop to spin. Current could cause motion. And there was a natural question that Faraday in England and Joseph Henry in the US asked. They said, well, if current can cause motion, can motion cause current? And what they were trying to do was to invent the generator, which is how we get almost all of our electricity. So we're going to look at some of the basics today, and then we'll go a bit 3D after that. So the obvious question, if a current produces magnetism, can magnetism produce a current? A bit of terminology. Recall, this funky symbol here, Hannah, we used in the circuitry unit for voltage. It stood for EMF. It stands for the word electromotive force, and it's terribly named Madison because it's not a force. It's not measured in newtons. It's measured in volts. It's an archaic word, an old word, that refers not to a force but to a voltage in a cell. So voltage and EMF mean the same thing. And in fact, in this unit, I'm often going to use the curly E because we're going to have an equation again, Laura Lee, with V voltage and V velocity in the same equation. So I'm going to get around that without the wings this time. I'm going to say, here's actually why we use the EMF symbol because otherwise you've got two Vs and Hannah, it's confusing. Okay. Here's what I'd like you to imagine. Suppose we have a magnetic field, that's this rectangle. It's an external magnetic field. Alex, what direction is the magnetic field? What did I type over here? Okay, magnetic field is into the page. And I don't know, your diagram might not have photocopied quite as clean or as neatly. But Cody, what I'm trying to show here is a metal bar. And we're pulling it with a string down the page. Or we uh, have little invisible angels pulling it or something is causing it to move, okay? Now, because it's metal, charges are free to move in it because it's a conductor. So what we're gonna do, what I'd like you to do is draw one little positive lonely charge right in the middle. Uh, even though it's the electrons that technically move, we're gonna, again, pretend that the positives move because mathematically it's the same thing. Which way is this positive charge moving? Which way is the velocity of this whole bar, Hannah? So this is a great right-hand rule review. Point your right thumb down the page. Which way is the magnetic field according to this question? So point your thumb down the page, extend your fingers into the page. If I'm looking at the board, it would be thumb down, fingers into the page. Which way is your palm pointing? Palm is pointing to the right. This positive will get forced this way all the positives will get forced to the right of this bar. And Alex, you know which way the negatives will get forced? To the left. In fact, what you've just done is you separated the charges. Technically, Madison, what you've just done is exactly the same thing that goes on in a battery, except in a battery, chemicals separate the charges. They do work on the charges. They create a voltage. Here, movement is creating a voltage. Since the charges have been separated, which takes work, we have voltage because voltage is defined as energy per coulomb or work done on each charge, if you really want to think about it. The reason, Matt, you could run stuff from a battery was the chemical reaction separated the charges. It didn't work on the charges, so each charge had some extra potential energy, which when it went through the circuit, it gave that to the electrical device. We call this voltage induced by motion. Induced voltage or motion voltage. Because the energy in this case came not from a chemical reaction like in a Duracell, but from moving something. And eventually, Ailish will build this into a three-dimensional model where instead of moving it, we'll spin it, which is how every hydroelectric generator works. And we'll show how spinning something can create a voltage as well. And then, yay, we've solved the energy crisis. At least we can create cheap energy, cheap electricity. 
In other words, motion can induce an EMF. And Kim, what's EMF another word for? Voltage. How? Here's the equation. It says find the expression for the amount of voltage induced by motion. And it says, first of all, what's the definition of voltage? I said it was how much work per charge, technically potential energy per charge, Laura Lee, but I'm going to say work per charge because they're somewhat interchangeable. And then it says definition of work. What was the definition of work? Way back when, from physics 11, work was what times what? Malcolm, you're right. Back when you did homework, you had some game. Yeah, this is actually force times distance divided by the charge. Except, Malcolm, I'm going to erase the time sign because it looks like an X. I'm a little worried. Which force? Well, as it turns out, Malcolm, what's separating the charges is magnetic force. So I'm going to put FB D over Q. What was the magnetic force on a moving charge? The magnetic force on a moving charge was Q V B. Oh, and I'll drop the D down, and I'm still dividing by Q. Matt, what do you notice happens with the Qs? They cancel. This is going to give us, by the way, you might want your formula sheet out. It's up to you. But this is going to give us the equation for induced voltage. Now, Madison, they use the EMF symbol, not the V symbol. And I think they write it like this, B, V. And instead of distance, they use L for the length of the rod, because that is the distance you're separating the charges. Is it BVL? Or is it BLV? BLV. Oh, and we have to add one more thing, though. All of these need to be perpendicular to each other. Otherwise, you're not going to get much bang for your buck. Okay, but this is how you can create a voltage by moving a bar through a magnetic field. It's a scalar equation because voltage is energy per coulomb, so it's a scalar. Energy is a scalar. And it says here you only get volts when we're perpendicular. It's measured in volts, so teslas, meters, and meters per second. If the wire, the speed, and the field are not perpendicular, we only get a small voltage. Example three, turn the page, I'll show you. So in the first example, Cody, in the first diagram, I made the bar horizontal and the velocity vertical. So they were 90 degrees here. I've got the bar vertical and the velocity vertical in this diagram. Once again, let's look at a single solitary positive right there in the middle. It says, indicate which end of the wire is negatively charged and discuss why little voltage is created. So Madison, which way is this positive charge moving? Well, which way is the whole bar moving? So put your thumbs, all of you, down the page. Which way is the magnetic field? What did I write on the side there? Into the page. So extend your fingers into the page. Which way will that positive charge feel a force? To the? The problem is it can't go very far to the right before it runs out of room. Oh, especially imagine if instead of a bar, this was a wire, a very thin wire. I mean, yeah, you're going to have negatives going that way and positives going that way. But we said the voltage was separating the charges. You're not really going to separate the charges. Try that again, Mr. Duick. Come on, eraser. Small l, so small EMF. Classic multiple choice question, by the way. They'll give you four diagrams and they'll say, in which of these would the largest EMF be created? I'll bet you three of the diagrams, the bar is either parallel to the magnetic field or parallel to the direction of motion. It's not that you won't get zero, but it'll be close enough to zero that, <clears throat> what's the point? So example four. Find the induced voltage, created from motion, across the ends of the moving wire. Okay. Is B, L, V. 
Let's see, let's look at this diagram. Is everything perpendicular? Look at the magnetic field, look at the bar, and look at the velocity. Are they all 90 degrees to each other? Yep, so we will get a voltage. Uh, magnetic field, 1.25. Length, 0.8. Velocity, 5.25. How many volts will be induced across this bar? What will this bar be the equivalent of as a battery? What do you get, Carly? I think it's five point something if I'm doing the math right. 5.25? Okay. 5.25 volts, almost a 6-volt battery, not quite. Oh, which end would be positive, which end would be negative? Once again, let's put a little positive right in the middle. What's the velocity this time? Oh, what's this symbol mean? Which way is the velocity? So point your thumbs into the page. Which way is the magnetic field? I think I'm going to go into the page, down the page. Ooh, I think this is going to be the positive end. This is going to be the negative end, if I was setting this up in a circuit. Now, Victoria, right now, the charges get separated, and then they clump on the end, and they're stuck there. So the next question we're going to ask ourselves in a little bit is, um, Hey, Mr. Duick, what if you clamped wires onto the end? Could you get a full circuit? Yeah. And we'll start running stuff from it. For example, example five. A plane is sort of like a metal bar. It says, find the induced voltage across the wings of this plane. Okay. The induced voltage, the EMF, is BLV. Now let's double check. My length is this way. Why don't I use this length? Because that's parallel to the velocity. I want to use the perpendicular length. And I think if you're at 40,000 feet or 50,000 feet, I think, Cody, it's reasonable to assume that the Earth's magnetic field is downwards because it's kind of curvy. But I think when you're that high, it's basically heading straight down to the ground. Probably, you know, maybe 85 degrees, not quite 90 degrees. Eh, close enough. How many volts would be created across this airplane with a 0 0.08 Tesla magnetic field, a length of 60, and a velocity of 320? Yeah, uh, fairly big voltage. I think higher than what comes out of a plug. 0 0.008? Yes, it is. Thank you, Matt. Otherwise, you get a really high voltage. Dan, what'd you get? Or Kim, what'd you get? 154, yeah? 154 volts, more than out of an outlet. I have been told that back in the 50s and 60s, when they still had smoking on flights, that this is what they ran the uh, pop-out cigarette lighters from. Like they, they, I, I've been told that they still, they actually have a circuit where they bleed this voltage off and into the plane and they use it to power things. I mean, why not? It's there. It's a fairly easy circuit to set up. I got to confirm that though. But so I've been told. How could you set it up? Here's the most basic circuit. I can't just clamp it to something and let it freeze because as soon as it stops moving, no more voltage. The whole idea here, Matt, is it's the movement creating the voltage. So what you could do is you could have uh, maybe a metal strip that was really well greased, so very little friction, and just lay the bar across it. And then if you had a piece of string and you started to pull this to the right or invisible angels pulling it to the right or if you put it on an angle, gravity pulling it to the right or uh, there's all sorts of different ways to do this. Let's see what would happen. Here's our positive charge right here. 
Which way is it moving? To the right, according to this diagram. So let's all point our thumbs to the right. Uh, which way is the magnetic field this time? Out of the page. So I'm going to go thumbs right. I'm going to uh, fingers out of the page. Which way will the positive get forced in the bar, up or down? Down. In fact, Kelvin, I think what we're really saying now is we have a current since we're connecting the ends. The current, here's your resistor so that you don't have a short circuit. And now this is acting just like a battery. Here's your chairlift, not a chemical one this time, a motion-induced one. Here's your ski hill so that you don't short circuit back to the chairlift of zero, and you've got a complete, a complete circuit. You could think of it as a circuit diagram. Like that. Now, not only that, as soon as you have current flowing, in this case clockwise, as soon as you have current flowing, now these charges are moving in two directions. Madison, they're moving sideways because they're part of the bar, but they're also moving down the bar because they're part of a current. So here's our current. Instead of focusing on the sideways motion, let's focus on the downwards motion. Point your fingers down the page. Which way is the magnetic field still? Out of the page. Which way will the bar feel a force to the? And what that means, Gary, is as you pulled, you would feel something resisting you. It wouldn't be there, but you would feel it resisting you. This is a magnetic braking system. And I got a great demo to show you. So I did my lovely demo there. And they're talking about building this into also uh, amusement park rides, for example, a magnetic braking system. And I think there are some that already have this. Oh. And maybe if we reverse this process instead of a magnetic braking system, maybe we could come up with a magnetic acceleration system that we call a rail gun. Oh, let's look at that a little bit. Okay. The final lesson of the year is on transformers, not the cartoon, but the actual electric device. So... <laughs> Let's suppose we have, again, a string, angels, gravity, whatever. Something is uh, causing this to move to the right. It says the strip below is uh, 12 centimeters long. It's moving at 4.7 meters per second. The external magnetic field is 0 0.08 teslas. And the resistance of the rail circuit is 0 0.025 ohms. Find uh, A, the induced motion voltage. Okay. Induced voltage is BLV. Double check, is everything perpendicular? Velocity is 90 degrees to the bar, is 90 degrees to the magnetic field? Yep, well, we will get a voltage. Uh, the magnetic field is 0 0.08. The length of the bar is 12 centimeters, so 0 0.12. And the velocity is 4.7. You're not going to get a big voltage here. This one's quite small. Wasn't that cool, Hannah? Like it's it's very like let's slow it down. Physics. That's as close as I'll ever come to a nice witchcraft kind of a demo with you guys. By the way, that one there. I still remember the first time I saw that, and I was just oh. What do you get for a voltage? 0 0.45? 0 0.45 or 0 0.045? 0 0.045. Yeah, I was saying I don't think it's that big. Five hundredths of a volt. Eh. What does B want us to find, Carly? So I'm going to write down I equals question mark. And I do notice they told me the resistance of the circuit. This little resistor here, assuming this bar is resistanceless, which in our magic physics world it will be. What's the overall resistance of this circuit? 0 
ohms. Oh, and what's the overall voltage of this circuit? 0 0.045. Now I can use Ohm's law, V equals I times R, because remember, Alex, I said V and this are interchangeable. So I can use Ohm's law. The current is going to be the voltage divided by the resistance. Even though we have a very, very small voltage, how many amps of current would this system generate? Kelvin. I think higher than that. I think 1.8, isn't it? I think you divide it by 0.25 instead of 0.025. It's 1.8, which is a pretty good current. Like, that would shock you. That you would have felt, Hannah. C. Hannah, what's the last thing it wants me to find? On the strip or on an individual charge? Oh, that's Bill. On an individual charge, force was QVB. A good review for the test on Thursday. But on a, a magnetic wire, it's Bill. Let's see. B equals uh, 0 0.08. I equals 1.8. L equals 0.12. By the way, this lesson is also some very good review for some of the stuff you'll see on the test. What do you need to know on the test? Three equations. F equals QVB. Oh, and if it's moving in a circle, Madison, FB equals FC, and I can ask you to find for the radius or the mass or the charge or whatever. F equals Bill, if it's a wire. And then the magnetic field of a solenoid, Malcolm. B equals mu naught, the permeability of free space, NI over L. Uh, what do you get for magnetic force? Probably pretty small. Not Teslas, we're Newtons. Point zero one seven Newtons. <coughs> By the way, what if this guy was moving faster? If this was bigger, what would happen to this number here? If the velocity was bigger? Bigger. And what would happen to the current if your voltage was bigger? bigger, and what would happen to the force if that number was bigger? The reason this is nice for magnetic braking is the faster you're going, the faster it will decelerate you, but it will decelerate you in a nice smooth gradual curve. The slower you're going, the slower the force. So you'll come to, like, if you're going really fast, you'll decelerate really fast and then not so, and then slowly ease down nice and come to a gentle stop. Not a bad idea. Um, did anybody here drive or parents drive an uh, electric car like a Prius or something like that? See, I think this is what's going on with that whole regenerative braking. They talk about when you brake, you actually gain some of the energy back into the battery. I think they're using this force, not friction, to help you brake. Cool. Again, it's in three dimensions and spinning, so Hannah, it's a bit trickier to visualize, but the, the principle is there. Then Faraday and Henry, they both asked the next question. They said, well, what if instead of moving a single piece of metal, what if I move a loop of wire? And so Faraday and Henry both, they bent a loop of wire into a rectangle. So this is a very thin piece of wire. And they put it inside a magnetic field, and they moved it. Which way is the velocity, horizontal or vertical? horizontal. Which way is this section of wire, horizontal or vertical? What about this bottom section of wire? You're not going to get an EMF. In fact, just so to satisfy your curiosity, if I put a positive there, traveling to the right, fingers out of the page, he'd get forced down, but he has nowhere to go because it's a little thin piece of wire. And same with here. Here and here, you're not going to induce an EMF. Charles, what about a positive charge right on the end here? Well, let's see. Now, that's a vertical stretch of wire, so it is perpendicular to the velocity, and it is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Which way is it moving to the... Point your fingers to the right, please. Sorry, point your thumb to the right. Which way is the magnetic field according to this question? So thumb right, out of the page. This is going to get forced downwards that way. 
if we're trying to create a current. What about a charge at the very front? Well, which way is it moving, Leslie? To the right. Point your thumbs to the right. Which way is magnetic field? Out of the page. Which way will the charge at the front get forced? Also downwards. And so they found this didn't work because you got opposing currents that canceled each other out. Do you remember in the circuitry unit we did one day where we had batteries facing each other? And if this was 6 volts and this was 2 volts, what was my net voltage? 4 volts. Well, if this is 3 volts and this is 3 volts, if they're both identical, what's your net voltage? 0. What's your net current? 0. So they said, okay, that doesn't work very well. A loop in a wire, no good. Sorry, a loop in a magnetic field, no good. You get opposing currents. Both E's are in opposite directions, so they cancel. It was a good thought. Then they said, okay, let's try something else. Up until now, Hannah, we've been moving the bar to get power. Will power move the bar for us? So instead of putting a resistor and having this be the battery, they said, Malcolm, what if I add a battery to the circuit? Will the bar start to move on its own? And this is going to be the physics behind a railgun. You've heard the term in the news, Saddam Hussein was trying to build one about 10 years ago. And there's, there's still, in fact, I think the U.S. is pursuing this because, in theory, you could fire very large objects very fast, very, very fast. And if you want it to go faster, just add more current, which we can control very, very accurately. Let's look. So it says, for the circuit below right now, find the induced voltage. Well, how fast is the bar moving right now? zero. So right now, the induced voltage, which is B, L, V, Alex, if V is zero, what's my induced voltage right now? Zero. Nothing. But we've got a battery here. Okay. Which way is the current flowing out of this battery, up or down? Let's draw a little arrow down. Let's draw a little arrow in the resistor to the right. Let's draw a little arrow in the bar up. And let's draw a little arrow on the top to the left. And I'm going to call this clockwise or counterclockwise. Which way is the current flowing? Remember our abbreviation for that from the torque unit? Yeah, okay, let's bring that out again. Counterclockwise. What did you say, Cody? Counterclockwise? Now, watch. I guess that means that a charge starting here goes this way, goes this way, and which way is it traveling as it goes through the bar? It is moving. It's not moving to the right, but which way is the charge moving because of the battery? Which way is the charge moving because of the current, because of the battery? Well, point your thumbs up the page then, please. Which way is the magnetic field, according to this question? So thumbs up, magnetic field out. Which way will the bar experience a force? It's going to accelerate. Here's your railgun. Okay, so we said this. If you supply the motion amrit, you can get a current. Or if you supply the current, you can get motion. What happens to the strip? Accelerates. Okay. And just to help us visualize, let's put next to this battery, let's put 120 volts. Let's say we plugged it into a plug, household outlet. Now, here's the neat thing, example 11. As soon as it starts to accelerate, Madison, not only are the charges traveling up the bar because of the battery, because of the current, but now they're also moving to the... 
to the right. As soon as it starts to accelerate, the charges now have two components, vertical and horizontal. They're moving to the right. So as it speeds up, what happens to the induced voltage? Well, if the induced voltage is B, L, V, V is no longer zero. The induced voltage is going to increase. What happens to the current? Well, let's look at a little positive charge sitting right here. Now, the battery is pushing it upwards. There's an electromotive force pushing it up. But now it's moving to the right as well. Point your thumbs to the right. Which way is the magnetic field? Out of the page. Which way will that charge also feel a force? It's feeling a force in the opposite direction of the battery. There is an anti-current. In fact, we're going to call it a back current in the opposite direction of the source. So the overall current, I'm going to call that I net, decreases. By the way, what do you think the biggest this voltage can possibly get is? The max is going to be 120 volts, because that's our source. It's sending a voltage in this direction, Dan. This is sending a voltage in this direction. Eventually, you're going to reach an equilibrium point where your net voltage is zero because you have 220 volt batteries facing each other. Sort of. Then it'll stop accelerating, Kim, and just go at a constant speed. Okay. Oh, magnetic force on the strip. Well, since magnetic force is Bill, and we've already said your net current is decreasing. What's happening to the force on the strip? Also decreasing. It's accelerating less and less and less and less and less fast. In fact, eventually it hits constant speed. When? When your, BL, your BLV equals 120. So it's decreasing. And what happens to the speed of the strip? eventually constant. When? When the net force is zero. Hannah, when does that happen? When the current is zero. When does that happen? When the net voltage is zero. When does that happen? When your induced voltage exactly cancels out your source voltage. Oh, and you could solve for V and figure out how fast this railgun will shoot things. which is probably what they're interested in. Does that make sense? It says, explain your answer using relevant physics principles. I think we just, we just did. This is not a kind of a question I would give you as a using principles of physics right to explain. A question if I said, hey, if you double the current, what will happen? Will it go faster or slower? That would be a good question, but not the whole details. So this setup has several applications. The first is on the International Space Station, They've talked about using this to launch the space shuttle from the space station after it's docked. Because if the space shuttle is right by the space station, like a meter away, you probably don't want to fire your rocket engines if your engines are a meter away from the space station. Fire bad, even in space. So here is the thought. You use the wings of the shuttle itself as your conducting bar. You park the shuttle in outer space when you dock it on the space station. You have it touching two very well greased metal ro rods like this, or one metal U-shape. And is there much friction in space? Okay, so this will probably work okay. You have a big solenoid creating a magnetic field, in this case, into the page. And then you run a current through this whole system from your solar cells. So the current would go this way, this way, the space shuttle itself acts like the bar. So in the space shuttle, the current is going down the page. Point your thumbs down the page. Which way is the magnetic field? What do these X's mean? Into the page. Extend your fingers into the page. Which way will the space shuttle experience a force? There you go. It will speed up and launch. Not bad. Any moving parts? Nope. Fairly no maintenance? Yep. 
which it, it, especially in outer space, if you can build something that doesn't need maintenance so you don't have to do spacewalks to fix it, that's good. Spacewalks, very dangerous. Even uh, if you're doing all the spacewalk correctly, those astronauts are taking cosmic rays by the getrillion cancer risk. The more spacewalks you do, the more, more cancer risk you do. Uh, there's a second application, and it's going to happen when we look at electric motors. Yeah. As it turns out, electric motors do this same phenomenon. Now, it's going to be in a 3D spinning situation, but you're gonna have to, we're going to have to look at that dance specially because it's too complicated just to wrap our brain around it right now. But the faster you rev an electric motor the more back voltage it generates until eventually when you're revving full speed, the voltage that the motor is creating exactly cancels out the voltage from the plug. Which means when an electric motor is running at full speed, you know how much current is actually running through the motor? Zero. Which means if your electric motor is heating up, you know how you cool it off? You rev it full. Because if you rev it full, you have the least current in it, the least electrons, the least heat. It's very unusual for an electric motor. If you ever, any of you have ever used a power drill and you feel it getting warm, stop, take it off of load, and just hold the trigger down. And in about 30 seconds, if you let it rev with no load, you'll, holy smokes, it's gotten much cooler. You rev it up to cool it off. It's the only motor out there that does that. Nice feature. We're going to spend a whole day looking at back EMF or back voltage and some of the uses of it. So, as this strip continues to speed up, although it's accelerating slower and slower, so it's not speeding up as fast, the induced voltage will continue to grow. What happens when the induced voltage is equal to the supply voltage? What happens when that supply equals that. Remember what I said? What we talked about? A, B, C, or D. Or sorry, A, B, or C. You hit a constant speed. Why? Your net voltage is zero because there are two voltages in opposite directions. Therefore, what's your net current? Zero. Therefore, what's your net force? Remembering that magnetic force is bill. If I is zero and there's an I in the force equation, what's your net force? Zero. Therefore, if force is zero, what's your acceleration have to be? Because F is still MA. And if your acceleration is zero, what's another fancy phrase for saying your acceleration is zero? Constant speed. That would be the maximum speed of this railgun. Oh, and if, I don't know if you've ever wondered, what do they call it a railgun? Because there's two railings. Two rails. Oh, yeah. that seems kind of obvious. I thought it was like with a train or something. Nope. says, find an expression for the maximum speed of this railgun. Okay. V source equals the maximum speed is going to be BL no, that's wrong, Mr. Newick. Get the lowercase b by itself. This is why we don't use the two v's in the equation. Let's start getting the wrong b by itself, Madison. It's going to be your source voltage divided by that. Let's try some with numbers. Example 14. For each instance below, find A, B, C, and D. I'll draw a little line down the middle. And we're going to do each one at the same time. So let's do uh, A, the induced voltage at the same time. 
Now, induced voltage, or EMF, is BLV. It's BLV. How fast are we traveling right now? How fast is the bar moving? So what's the voltage just as we start to throw the switch, just as we turn this battery on, what's the induced voltage? Zero. Now, I crunched these numbers last class, and they were kind of boring. So let's crank this up a little bit. Instead of 8.0, cross that out and cross that out and make it 80.0. It's flat moving. Is it even possible? What's my source voltage? Uh, is BLV with 80 bigger than 320? Can we get it going that fast? Let's find out. 0.35 times a length of 4.1 times 80. How many volts will we be inducing across this bar working against the initial source battery? Hundred and fifteen? Yeah? Anyone else? It's Kim. Yeah? Okay. And Kim, all that means is as long as we have a long enough railing, and that's why if you ever see the pictures, uh, I don't know if you remember in the first Gulf War, back in, holy smokes, 1990, whatever it was, three or four, um, they, they stopped a ship heading to Iraq that claimed it was carrying oil pipelines and oil parts. It had a bunch of long, skinny parts, and the U.S. military figured it was railgun parts because you do need a long railing to get it going that fast. It's not instant. Okay? B. B. What's B want us to find? The net voltage. What's the net voltage in the first situation? It's meant to be really easy. 320. What's the net voltage in the second situation? Well, our source is 320, but we got 115 in the opposite direction. Uh, 300, oh, uh, 205? So still some voltage left. If we have a long enough railing, this can still go faster. C. What's the current and direction? Okay. The current is going to be V over R. Good old Ohm's law from last unit. Well, two units ago. It's going to be 320 divided by 8.5. How many amps will be flowing through this particular bar right now? Thirty-eight? Thirty-seven point six? We'll go to three sig figs. Now here, it's still going to be V over R, but it's going to be your net voltage. Right now, you only have 205 volts in this particular circuit. So how many amps are flowing through here now? Twenty-four? Three sig figs? 24.1? D. Find the magnetic force and the direction. Magnetic force on a wire or a bar is bill. Magnetic force on a wire or a metallic bar is bill. By the way, I'm pretty sure the direction is to the right, isn't it? Because if it was to the left, this would be a pretty stupid railgun. Hey. You mean, you know, right? Although if you had it going towards, well. Um, okay. Uh, what was the magnetic field? I've scrolled down. 
0.35, okay, 0.35, current 37.6, L 4.1. What's the magnetic force when we start? Fifty four newtons. And part way through it's going to be point three five uh twenty four point one times four point one. Once we're doing eighty meters per second, how much force is on this bar? Thirty five newtons? Is it still accelerating then? Must be. There's an unbalanced force. What's the maximum speed of this thing? Well, the maximum voltage is 320. So if I wanted to solve 320 divided by 0.35 times 4.1, that's the maximum speed that we can hit over this given distance, or with, with a bar of that distance. Rail guns. Voltage created by motion, induced EMF, BLV. What's your homework? You'll notice on purpose I didn't attach questions to this. Instead, your homework is going to be from the great big unit review. You can do 168, 1820, 35, 43. And you can also work on last unit review and right-hand rule assignment, both of which are due Thursday, studying and getting ready for your test. I guess you can also work on amusement park physics if you haven't finished that. Here's what I would not do. I don't think there's anyone here who is completely and totally caught up, including the assignment that I just put there. So I shouldn't see books closed or people standing and socializing and yakking and all that their stuff. you got 15 whole minutes.